In this video, you and I get to chat about some common networking tools that we're going to use at various stages of the lifecycle for an IP network. So let's begin with unshielded twisted pair cabling. So if we had a big spool of cabling, I'll go ahead and draw a spool here. So it's all wrapped around here. So let's imagine we have like 500 feet of unshielded twisted pair cabling. Maybe it's cat six or better. If we're implementing this cabling from scratch, from a spool, we need to terminate or do special treatment to the ends of those cable runs. So let's imagine we have a length of cable here. In Ethernet, end to end, we can't go further than 100 meters based on the specification. And that would be 100 meters from the device at one end to the device at the other end. So this could be, for example, a PC, and maybe over here is a switch. And that 100 meters needs to also include any patch cables we have. So maybe this right here terminates to a little outlet in the office. And then the customer has a little patch cable that goes from their PC to the outlet. That 100 meters is from this device here all the way to the port here. So the question might be, Keith, that's fine and dandy, but what has that got to do with networking tools? Well, one of the networking tools, if we're implementing this cabling, we need some tools to implement the terminations on this cable. And here are some options. We can use an RJ45 connector. And that's the one that looks like this right here, this little RJ45 connector. That's certainly one option. And I'll call that an RJ45 plug. Or if we want to terminate this end with an RJ45 jack so we can plug in a patch cable to it, that would be an RJ45 jack. And a popular option for that is a keystone jack. And that would be an example of an RJ45 jack that you plug into. Another option for terminating that cable, instead of using an RJ45 plug or an RJ45 jack, would be to terminate one end of the cable into a patch panel. So we could have a patch panel here. And on the back end, there's connectors where we can terminate an Ethernet run and then on the front side of this patch panel, it has RJ45 jacks. So again, we might ask, okay, Keith, great. We have several different ways of terminating an ethernet cable with an RJ45 plug, with an RJ45 jack or a patch panel, which is like a whole bunch of RJ45 jacks. Uh, so what does that got to do with network tools? So we need tools to cut the cable. We need tools to go ahead and strip the plastic off the end of the cable. We need tools to crimp the RJ45 plug onto those eight wires. Or if we're terminating with an RJ45 jack, we need tools to go ahead and make those connections as well. We would also need similar tools if we're terminating our Ethernet cable at the back of a patch panel. So tools for UDP cabling would include cable strippers, where we could remove the plastic from the outside of the Ethernet cable. So in addition to cable strippers, we're also going to need a crimper. And as we go through these videos, we'll go shopping together online and take a look at these tools and also how we would use them in terminating our Ethernet cable. Now, if we're terminating the Ethernet cable on the back of a patch panel or on the back of a little RJ45 jack, we're going to need a device that can push those wires on the back end into the correct spots for the connectivity. And that's true for the patch panel on the back end and also on this little RJ45 jack on the back end. And the tool we're going to use on the back end to do that is called a punch down tool. So they can make the connection on the patch panel and also here on the RJ45 jack. And in corporate buildings, most floors of the building have some type of a wiring closet. So let's imagine that this represents the wiring closet and this represents a PC, our computer that's somewhere out on the floor. And the PC has a little patch cable going from the ethernet adapter that goes into an RJ45 jack. And that RJ45 jack is wired over to the wiring closet. And hopefully it's well documented to indicate this cable right here that it goes to this PC or to this office. However, sometimes it's not. So in a situation where we have lots of cables that are going out, how in the world do we verify which cable here in the wiring closet goes out to which jack out here on the floor? And the answer to that is a tool that can help us find that. And that would be a toner probe. And a toner probe has two parts. It's got a tone generator and it also has a sensor. So what we could do is we could take the tone generator and we could plug it in, for example, right here on this port. So we take off the PC, we put in the generator, and then we take the sensor component, which oftentimes has a little sharp end on it so you can point at the cables, and we start touching it. We touch it here and here and here. And when it starts making an audible noise like, woo, 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 we know that we are either close to or on that cable. And then with a little other testing, we can verify exactly which cable it is. It's sort of like a game of fox and hound. So a toner probe kit can be a lifesaver when we're trying to document which cable in the wiring closet goes to which jack out on the floor. And maybe we had a two-fold problem. Maybe this user at this PC said they were having intermittent communications problems, and we wanted to verify that this run, we'll call it run number three here, we wanted to verify that run number three was okay, meaning that it didn't have any shorts or opens, and that the pinouts were correct on both ends. So how do we verify something like that? The answer is a cable tester. And a cable tester has two parts as well. So we put one part here at the jack, 
and then we put the other part here in the wiring closet at the other end of that cable, and then we run the test. And then the cable tester can tell us that the pinouts are correct. Also, depending on the cable tester, it may be able to tell us how long that cable is. And now as I'm looking at this, it's actually <laughs> this cable right here we're testing. And the cable tester may also be able to tell us things about resistance and attenuation and shorts or opens that could degrade performance over the network. So let me clean that up just a little bit. Another tool that can come in very, very handy is a network tap. And when you think of a network tap, think of an eavesdropper, somebody who's listening in on your conversation. So if this computer here was having a problem, if we implemented a network tap right in the middle, so we basically connect one end of the cable here and one end of the cable here, or more likely, let me go ahead and remove that. We simply unplug the cable here, we put the network tap, and then we plug the other end of the cable wherever the first one was originally going. So effectively, we're sitting in line on that cable. So any data that's sent over this ethernet line from the PC to wherever that traffic was being sent, a copy of it can be extracted here at the tap. And then furthermore, we can take that data, the packets that are being copied, and we can send that over to a protocol analyzer. And then at the protocol analyzer, we can take a close look at the real traffic and see what's really happening. Like, oh, wow, that packet's malformed. Or wow, this PC is making the request to the server, but the server is never responding. Because with the tap, we're literally able to see the packets and get copies of those packets as they go over this Ethernet segment. And one of the most popular and free protocol analyzers out there is called Wireshark, which can take that data that was captured off the tap and then present it in a way that we can sort through it and take a look at the details of the packets that were captured off that network segment. Another tool that can come in handy when troubleshooting is a loopback plug. So if it's this PC that was having problems, we could remove the patch cable going to the Ethernet jack. And on the Ethernet port, we can install a plug, a loopback plug, and then we can do some local diagnostics just to verify the network interface card is working correctly. Now, the concept of a loopback plug is applicable on lots of different types of networking devices. So whenever you hear the concept of loopback, just think itself. So the PC is doing a test of itself, and the plug could be a physical device that we plug into the Ethernet adapter that basically takes the wires where we're sending data, and it wraps them around to the wires that are receiving the data. So anything that the PC sends is effectively going to be sent back immediately right here at the loopback plug to itself. And again, the purpose of a loopback plug is to do local testing of the device and the network interface card itself. And let's draw one more Ethernet cable. Let's go from the wiring closet and let's go to the ceiling on this floor. And for the termination of that, let's put an RJ45 plug because it's very likely we want to have at least one access point on that floor. So here's the AP, the access point. On the switch, we'd be powering it with power over Ethernet, so we don't have to have separate power adapters in the ceiling. A really important tool to help us identify where we should place that would be a Wi-Fi analyzer. So prior to rolling out an access point using a Wi-Fi analyzer, we're often going to perform a site survey to identify how many access points and where they should be placed for proper coverage. And then after they're installed, we go back and do the survey again, but this time as a validation survey, just to make sure everything's covered the way it should be. So while Wi-Fi analyzers are looking specifically at Wi-Fi signals, we also very likely are going to want to have access to a radio frequency analyzer as well. Because we could have some noise and other non-Wi-Fi signals in the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz space, which could hamper our effectiveness of our Wi-Fi network, and an RF analyzer can help us identify those as well. And I've got a great idea regarding how we can reinforce the concepts and the benefits and use of these tools. And we'll do that in the very next video. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.